you ever felt alone? <laughs> we were created by God, and I think we could make this case certainly from the Old Testament and into the New, created by God to have people around us. We were created to be relational, to have other people that we can depend on and that can depend on us. We need to have people, but things happen in life. Relationships have struggles. People come and people go. There are those moments when we feel alone. If we're not careful, that aloneness can lead to other feelings, feelings of discouragement and feelings of bitterness. And if we're not careful, it can even take us to a place of feeling hopeless and depressed. What do we do when we inevitably have those moments of alone feelings come into our lives? We know what it is to feel alone, but how do we handle it? I want to give you some hope today. If you're listening today and you are feeling alone, we're going to go through some things that I believe can help you, can give you the right perspective. Maybe you're not feeling alone today. The chances are you will have a time in your life where you'll look around and say, is there anyone else here? What do you do when you feel alone? We're going to discuss that on the March or Die show starting in just a moment. Hello and welcome to the March or Die show today. Very glad to have you joining me. And I am looking forward to working through this very important topic with you. I hope that if you have been listening, you've enjoyed the last several episodes. We've had some incredible guests on, some great content. And I want to encourage you, I don't always do this, but encourage you to go back to the show, to scroll through the now 101 episodes of the March or Die show. We have talked about principles for moving forward when life is overwhelming. Some incredible guests that have helped to expound on that. We talk about hope in the midst of hopelessness. We talk about how we can move forward when we just don't feel like it. When it seems like everything is against us, how do we continue to put one foot in front of the other? We've discussed that and so much more on the show. And I would encourage you to go back and check out some of those older episodes. If you're not yet subscribed to the March or Die show, please do that right now. You can subscribe and then share this content out with others. We continue to grow as a community when you, after subscribing, share the content with others so that they can participate in the conversation as well. Very grateful to have you with me today. We are going to talk today about uh, really something that's common to all of us. I, I would call it an affliction. Really, it's a human condition. It is that condition of feeling alone. Have you ever felt alone? Have you ever looked around and thought, there's no one here but me? I feel like I have been connected to people, but they don't seem to want to be connected to me anymore. Perhaps there was a close relationship, even an intimate relationship, that for one reason or another broke apart. Uh, loved ones come into your life, and certainly there are times when they also go out. We have friends at different stages of our lives, but as we move through those stages, perhaps those who once we felt were very close are no longer close friends. They're not even around. We know the feeling, and I've, I've talked to people who identify with this so strongly. I have felt this way and do sometimes, that even in a crowd of people, even with others around me, even in the context of my family, my close family, I can feel alone. I feel like I'm not heard. I feel like people don't necessarily understand what I'm struggling through because they have no real interest in understanding what I'm struggling through. I feel like I have relationships, but that those relationships are not always close enough to be edifying or encouraging or building relationships. Have you ever felt that way? I'm confident that you probably have, unless you're that 1% uh, out there that's always happy and always upbeat, perhaps a little disconnected from reality. You know what it is to feel alone. It's a terrible feeling to be sure. And the longer that feeling lasts, the more difficult it becomes to dig out of it. It's as if you're in a pit <laughs> by yourself and that pit gets deeper and darker the longer you feel alone. If that feeling of aloneness lasts too long, it can lead to other feelings. Feelings of discouragement. I work in a world where we often talk about isolation. 
in the work that I do with the Mighty Oaks Foundation, working with veterans and service members, those who are struggling for one reason or another because of traumas in their life, uh, past traumas, uh, traumas related to their service in the military, some in the first responder community, uh, others who, because of that trauma, have made bad decisions and now find themselves in other difficult, most of the time relational issues and situations. Uh, isolation is something we talk about a lot. We talk about isolation often because when you isolate from others, the only voice that you're hearing is your own. And when the only voice that you're hearing is your own, the only input that you're receiving is yours, <laughs> you're going to begin believing things that just aren't true. And if you feel alone, if you believe you are alone, that feeling and belief can lead then to discouragement because you, again, feel and believe that there's no one around that cares. You're the only one who cares about whatever it is that you care about. You're the only one who has to bear whatever burden you seem to be carrying. There's no one else there, and you can become discouraged. I've had moments in my life where the feeling of being alone literally led to a... Uh, what feels like a vacuum <laughs> sucking the courage out of my heart. You have the courage to try new things. You have the courage to take on uh, big tasks, to take some risks, to set some goals, to do stuff that's going to require a lot of effort on your part. It requires courage. But the feeling of being alone can become discouraging. To encourage means to put courage into. To discourage means to remove courage from. Feeling alone can be a very discouraging time. You begin to say things like, what's the point? <laughs> Why does it matter? No one cares anyhow. Why should I try? You become discouraged. That discouragement can lead to another feeling. The feeling of bitterness. The Bible talks about bitterness. The Bible talks about it as though it's a root that can take hold in your heart and in your mind. You care about what you're involved in, but because you feel alone, there's a bitterness toward those who have left. There's a bitterness toward those that you believe should care and don't seem to care. There's a bitterness. That bitterness can take hold in our hearts. And that bitterness, if we're not careful, can lead to another feeling that is hopelessness. To be discouraged is one thing. To be hopeless is something entirely different. <laughs> Discouragement can lead to bitterness. That bitterness takes hold and puts us in a place of hopelessness. What is hopelessness? It is truly looking into the future and concluding there is no hope. That's a terrible place to be. To be discouraged means that you lack the courage to try new things. You begin to say those things in your head uh, that you may not say out loud. What's the point? Why should I even try? Does it even matter? But hopelessness is when you've come to the conclusion that there is no point and that it does not matter. That the future is very bleak and very dark. That hopelessness then can lead to further isolation and despair. I've talked about this on the podcast recently about those who make the decision to end their lives. Uh, I, I, I titled it or phrased it this way, when darkness becomes desperation. <laughs> the feeling of aloneness can lead to a feeling of darkness and discouragement. A bitterness because you look at the world and conclude they're all against you or at the very least they don't care. Which takes you to a place of hopelessness. A darkness then becomes despair. Which leads to further isolation. Which drives you, again, if you're not careful, deeper and deeper into that dark pit of being alone. Now, I'm not trying to discourage you today. And hopefully you're not discouraged. But have you ever felt the way that I just described? I have. <laughs> it's funny because aloneness is not something you ever really get a hold of. You can come back there again and again. But the cycle is the same. 
from the feeling of being alone, if it lasts too long, it leads to discouragement, which can create bitterness in your heart, which then develops this hopelessness about the future and turns into discouragement and despair and leads to further isolation. It's crazy that when you feel alone, often the response is to get further away from people. So what do we do? I think we need to recognize that we were created by God to be around others. Genesis chapter 1, we see that God created everything, that when he created man, he saw man interacting with the animals and concluded and said in Genesis chapter 1 that it is not good that man should be alone. He then created the woman and brought Eve to Adam. Why? Because men and women shouldn't be alone. They need one another. We can see this theme throughout Scripture, and as we come even into the New Testament, uh, the creation or the institution um, of the local church. What is the local church? It's so many things, uh, but in a sense, it is the bringing together of those with like mind and like heart, with like focus and like, like perspective. Those who think the same and desire to do the same, that is, please God with their lives, coming together in a mutually beneficial context, supporting one another. In fact, in the book of Hebrews, we're told not to forsake the assembling of ourselves together, but to get together more as you see the day approaching. What's the day? The day of uh, oppression, the day of persecution. Get together, be together. We're to be together in that context because we were created to be together. Recently, I've talked about the crucifixion and how the crucifixion drove the disciples away from Jesus. What a crazy picture. But after Jesus was crucified and placed in the tomb, where do we find the disciples? We find them together. From that place of togetherness, the church was born, and they went out together to reach the world with the gospel. We were created by God to have communion and to have fellowship. But how do we get it back? when we feel as though it has been taken away. I'm going to give you some perspectives and then four specific steps that you can begin to put into your life if you feel alone. Uh, there is so much that goes into this. As I say often on this podcast and on my blog when I write, these conversations are a starting point. But we need a starting point. So I want to give you a couple of perspectives and then four specific things that you, can, that you can do and you can consider. We'll get to those in just a moment. All right, what are the perspectives we need when we are feeling alone? I, I want to, again, give you some perspectives. Please listen. Hopefully you are listening. <laughs> Pay attention. You need to, first of all, as a perspective... Get the right perspective. You can't do the right things unless you're seeing things clearly, all right? So what is the right perspective? Start with this. Separate how you feel from what is true. Separate how you feel from what is true. I sometimes feel alone. I might even voice that. I am alone. Even though reality is different, than how I feel. Don't ever forget, our feelings were given to us by God. Our feelings are important. Our feelings help us in so many ways. Relationally, feelings are very important. But our feelings should inform the decisions that we make and the actions that we take, but should not drive them. We should be informed by our emotions. They were given to us by God. But emotions should not dictate what we do or what we say or how we treat others. You need to learn in your life, just like I do, how to separate how you feel from what is actually true. Often you are not as alone as you feel in this moment. The fact that someone is not paying attention to you right now doesn't mean they don't care. Maybe it means they're busy. <laughs> the fact that you're super passionate about something and others aren't doesn't mean that they don't care about you. It just means that you have a passion they do not share. That's not aloneness. That's different people pursuing different passions. We're going to get to some scripture in a moment that uh, really helps us to understand that 
God is always with us and God always cares, but learn how to separate how you feel from what is actually true. You are not typically as alone as you think you are. The fact that a person has left your life, has walked out, whatever the case, whatever that looks like, doesn't mean that you are alone. It just means that that person is no longer in your life. An illustration, how many children have not gotten the attention they need from a parent because another parent has left. And the parent who has been left, they feel so alone when what they have in their life are kids that care about them and that need them to care. Other relationships we could look at the same way. Other situations and circumstances in life. Because one person has walked out doesn't mean you're alone. It just means they're not there anymore. You're rarely as alone as you feel like you are. Here's the other thing, though. Separate how you feel from what is true. You need help even when you don't feel like it. This is something that I struggle with. You may not feel like you need help right now. You're saying to yourself, I'm alone, they've left, or they don't care, or there's no one else around. And whether that's true or not, hopefully you can separate how you feel from what is true. But in all of that, if you feel that way, you need to get some help. Maybe that means speaking to friends or others who actually are around that you just uh, feel, <laughs> don't care. But separating truth from how you feel, you can recognize feeling like this is not healthy. It can lead to the other issues that we've talked about. It can take me down a very dark path. So I need to get help even though I don't feel like I want help. Maybe professional help is what you need. Sitting down with a counselor or someone who is experienced in working through issues like this. Whatever the case, separate how you feel from what is true. What is true when you can't get past the I'm alone feeling is that you need help. Another perspective question that you need to ask. So this is perspective. Part of having the right perspective is separating how you feel from what is true. Get a real perspective of what's actually going on. Not simply how you feel, but what's actually going on. That's important. The next thing you need to do, and please hear me out on this, is ask a question. Did I create this environment of loneliness? Did I create this environment of loneliness? One of the issues that leads to bitterness is the fact <laughs> that as humans, we like to blame others for where we have placed ourselves. Maybe you're not like this. I certainly am. I can do everything in the world to make people not want to be around me and then blame them for not wanting to be around me. Again, maybe this isn't you, but this is human. We create conditions around ourselves and then blame the other people in our lives for what we ourselves have created. If you are feeling alone, it's important that you ask the question, did I create the environment that has caused me to feel alone? Perhaps the reason people have walked out or the reason people want to avoid me or the reason I'm not getting a phone call or the reason I feel the way that I do is because I have created an environment that's given a message, sent a message. I don't want you to be here. I don't want you to call. I don't want you to be around. Or everything is fine. I feel fine. Uh, I don't need help. Now, that is not to, asking this question, is not to blame you for how you feel. Please understand the difference. I always talk about personal responsibility. I think every single episode of the show I've done, everything I write, I talk about personal responsibility, taking responsibility for yourself, taking responsibility for the part of your situation that is your responsibility. I, I talk about this a lot. I have talked about this a lot. And in this, we need to take personal responsibility. But this is not about assigning blame to you instead of others.
Because here's the next thing you can do. If you're assigning blame, you can look at it and say, I've created this situation. I talked about this again in the podcast I did a few weeks ago uh, on the issue of suicide. You can so take responsibility that you're blaming yourself for where you are. Everyone's walked out. Everyone's left. The world would be a better place if I wasn't here. This is not to take you to that end. (laughs) That's not what this is about. This is about perspective. It's about recognizing, have I done some things? Have I said some things? Have I not been honest or transparent in some areas that I should have been? Have I created this environment that's caused me to feel alone? I often had this conversation with husbands that are super passionate about work or super passionate about, uh, even in, in ministry context, super passionate about what they do. And their spouse, who's taking care of the stuff that's being left, the kids, finances, the house, whatever, they're carrying their own burden. They're not as passionate about what you're passionate about, the work, the ministry stuff, whatever you're into. And so, this is often husband and wife, right? The husband will say, she doesn't care about me or she doesn't love me or I'm alone because she doesn't get as excited about this as I do. Meanwhile, she's taking care of her own thing. You have, in essence isolated her because you're not interested in what she's interested in, but your conclusion is she doesn't care about me. Ask yourself the question, have I created the environment that's caused me to feel alone? That's just healthy introspection because you can't move forward until you've identified the actual issues at work. All right, very helpful questions. Here's another one, another perspective one. And I'm asking you, please hear what I'm saying. Understand what I'm saying. Because it is so easy to fall into this pit of, well, I'm the problem, I'm, I'm the issue. Maybe they walked out because they don't care about me. <laughs> that may not be true at all but we're trying to determine what's going on. We have to ask some diagnostic questions. One of the diagnostic questions is, uh, what's true? Not how do I feel, but what's true? Are there really people around me? Maybe some have walked out, but are there others around me? Am I as alone as I feel? That's a good diagnostic question. Have I contributed to this environment of loneliness? Good diagnostic question. Here's another one. Are you really alone? Or are you just not having your expectations met? Are you really alone? That is, no one cares about you. Uh, No one's concerned for you. You have no one to encourage you or help you. Are you really alone? Or are you just not having your expectations met? Unmet expectations destroy as many relationships as probably anything else. Friendships work relationships, community relationships, if you're in a community of some kind, a church or some other community relationship, close relationships, family, intimate relationships, unmet expectations will destroy relationships. That is us placing expectations on others. We expect for them to respond to us in a particular way. And when they don't, we're let down And we conclude they didn't respond the way we wanted them to because they just don't care. Communication is so important. We'll do other podcasts on communication. I've written on this on my blog, jeremystonlicker.com. A little commercial there. Go over there, (laughs) jeremystonlicker.com. Communication is important. Setting uh, the expectations is very important. But unmet expectations can cause us to feel alone. They don't care about me. And the reason I've come to that conclusion is because they have not done what I believe they would do, even though I never told them I expected them to do that. (laughs) You know, it's possible to be loved by somebody who is so confused they don't know how to express that love to you. Are you really alone? Or are you just not having your expectations met? That is a very important question. These are diagnostic questions. Ask these questions. And then go back and answer them. 
separating what is true from how I feel. Uh, am I really alone? Do I really need help? Answer that question honestly, diagnostically. That's how we get out of this pit of loneliness. We ask the question, did I create this environment or did I at least contribute to this environment? If the answer is yes, then when getting help, be honest about that. If people have a hard time dealing with you because you're a jerk all the time, stop being a jerk. Maybe you'll have more friends. The Bible does say that for a man to have friends, he has to show himself friendly. Am I going out of my way to be kind to others? Am I serving others? Or do I simply expect people to pour into my life? Have you cr contributed to this environment? If the answer is yes, then get some help to deconstruct that, to understand that. Are you really alone or are you just not having your expectations met? Very important questions. Having answered those questions, here are four things that you can do in the face of loneliness. You have to start by answering those questions honestly, though. Get help if you need to work through those. But here are some principles or some perspectives, some things that you can do, some action steps. Number one, understand what Scripture says. Understand what Scripture says. This week I wrote on my blog, again, at jeremystolliker.com. Go to the blog. You can find this week's blog. Uh, it's a list of 20 verses. 20 verses dealing with the subject of loneliness. Go and check that out. When we feel alone, it's really important to go to the Bible to help us get the right perspective. What does the Bible say? There's a great passage, Psalm 139 and verse 7. I want to read this. Whither shall I go from your spirit? Or whither shall I flee from your presence? So the psalmist here, he's talking to God. Where, where do I go to get away from you? If I ascend into heaven, you're there. If I make my bed in hell, you're there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost part of the sea, even there shall thy hand lead me, and thy right hand shall guide me. What is the psalmist's conclusion? God, you are always with me. Psalm 145 and verse 18, The Lord is near unto all them that call upon him, to all that call upon him in truth. He will fulfill the desire of them that fear him. He will hear their cry and save them. You say, I'm so alone. God would say, I'm always present. In fact, he calls us to come to him in Matthew eleven twenty eight. 28. Come unto me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. James chapter 4 and verse 8, draw near to God and he will draw near to you. 1 Peter 5 and verse 7, casting all your care upon him for he careth for you. On that blog post, it's, it's a few sentences of introduction and then just 20 verses. Understanding what the Bible says about God's relationship to us. The fact that even when we feel alone, we're separating truth from how we feel. The feeling of aloneness is not a reality if we trust God. God, if God is true, and certainly he is, he's always with us, he cares for us, he's there. There have been times in my life where I felt so alone that all I could do was call out to God and say something like, God, I feel so alone. And I'm encouraged with God's word to understand that even when it seems like everyone else has left and no one else cares, God is there and he does care. So what do we do when we feel alone? We've answered those questions, but what do we do? Well, first of all, understand what scriptures say. Start there. What does the Bible say? Number two, and this is really simple, but super important. <laughs> Be the right person. Be the right person. Again, going back to unmet expectations, we want others in our life to be the right person for us. I get that. It's a human need. We want the right people in our lives. We're going to talk about that in just a second. Uh, I, I fully understand that. But a big part of this is instead of focusing on the people who aren't being the right person for us, instead of focusing on what we have lost or who's walked out or the fact that people don't care about what we're dealing with right now, instead of focusing on that, focus rather on being the right person. You know one of the greatest remedies to feeling alone? Finding other people who may also feel alone and ministering to them. Sending a text. Sending an email. Making a phone call if people still make phone calls. 
uh, walking across the church auditorium on Sunday morning instead of staying in your spot and, and saying hello to someone that you've seen and maybe you haven't talked to in a while, letting them know you're thinking about them. Write a note. I don't know we don't do that very often anymore, but write a note. Send a small gift. Invite someone out to coffee. Be the right person. I don't want to diminish the power of the Bible when it says that in order for us to have friends, we need to show ourselves friendly. It says that for a reason. That is the Word of God. But practically, what does that look like? It looks like being the right person for others. We spend so much time focused on what we don't have that we fail to focus on what we should be and what God has called us to be. Focus on being the right person for others. Next, so we understand what the Bible says. God is always with us. He doesn't leave us. He hears our cry. He cares about us. When we have nowhere else to go, I wonder, as an aside, if sometimes God does not allow us to feel lonely so that we will be driven to Him. (laughs) Faith, trust, and confidence in Him. We then need to be the right person. But next, number three, we need to find the right people. This goes back to separating how we feel from what is true. You may not feel like you need help. But if you are consumed with this thought of how alone you are, you need help. That's truth. You may not feel like it, but it's truth. That takes us to this third point. Find the right people. Where are you building relationships? Where are you uh, building those relationships that will be encouraging and will be fruitful and productive in your life? Find the right people. Church can be a good place to find the right people. Get involved in serving. Get involved in groups. You're being the right person for others. You're being encouraging. Be encouraging to the right people. Be around the right people. Stay away from negative influences and negative people, people who want to use you to fulfill them. Stay away from those people and find people that you can serve and can be encouraged by. Find the right people. Get out of yourself, even when you don't feel like it. Spend time with the right people. Initially, this may be you creating the environment where those people come together. Again, inviting out to coffee or getting a group together or going to do some kind of an activity with a small group of people from your church or just people that you know and that you care about. Get involved in being around others. Be the right person, but find the right people. I know often uh, folks will say, well, where do I find the right people? Faith communities are a good place to find the right people. Doing things that aren't virtual. Getting together with real people and doing real things. That's how you find the right people. You want to find quality people? Find other people who are serving in the community. Maybe in the church. Maybe elsewhere. People who are volunteering. One thing we have no shortage of today is opportunity to volunteer, to serve. Find the people who are doing the things that reflect their character and their quality. And connect to them. Find the right people. A note here. Finding the right people, if you're further down on that uh, initial description of that spiral, than just feeling alone. Maybe feeling alone has led to a feeling of, of darkness. Maybe feeling alone has led to a place where you're becoming bitter. Feeling alone has led to a place uh, where you want to further isolate. If that's where you are, the right people may be qualified professional help, a, a biblical counselor, someone who can speak truth into your life and help pull you out of that pit of darkness so that you can get to a place where you can be around others and be encouraged by others. Find the right people. And then number four. Man, I love this. This has ministered to me recently. Run your race with patience. It wasn't that long ago I wrote on this uh, on the blog, and I talked about this on the podcast, uh, Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 through 3. I I was thinking about this topic, this topic of loneliness and being alone and not knowing exactly what to do and feeling like there's no one else around. I, I was thinking on this topic reading through a few things, and I I came back to this passage. What do I do when I feel alone? 
This is the March or Die show. You, you know that. Hopefully you know that. <laughs> Hopefully you're aware of that. The principle that we operate off of on this show is that in life there are trials and tribulations and difficulties and obstacles. Things come into our lives that will stop our forward movement, our momentum. And when they do, we can either stay where we are and die. We can do that. 100%. We can do that. Or, better yet, we can put one foot in front of the other and march. You see, those enemies that present themselves as obstacles and traumas and trials, those enemies that present themselves, they stand in our path, they stand in our way and keep us from moving forward. They need to be addressed. But sometimes the only way you can address them is by refusing to stay where you are and putting one foot in front of the other and marching to a place where you can better impact the enemy. I've talked about this over a hundred times on this podcast. I've written about it. Uh, This is the principle. March when it would be easier to stay where you are and die. Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 1. I'm going to read these verses, 1 through 3. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest ye be wearied and faint in your minds. There's so much there. But what do you do when you don't know what to do? What do you do when you feel like everyone's walked out and no one cares and there's nothing else around you to encourage you? You're beginning to feel discouraged. What do you do? Well, you get the right perspective, understanding that God is there, that God has not walked out, and that God does care. You decide you're going to be the right person. Be the person that can minister to others and then find the right people. Get around the right people. Get around the right kind of people that you can minister to and that will minister to you and then run your race with patience. Put one foot in front of the other. God has put you on the path that he wants you to be on. Run that race. Walk that path with patience. It will take time, but keep moving forward. I love that the next verse in this passage says, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Jesus, our Savior, God in the flesh, he walked a lonely path. He had people around him, but at his moment of greatest despair, if you will, as he's praying, drops of blood sweating from him in the garden. He's praying to God, God, if it be possible, Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. But if not, your will be done. Those who he was with, his friends, were asleep. They had no idea what he was struggling with. He would make his way to the cross. And when he got to the cross, the moment of crucifixion, being murdered by his creation, what would happen? Everyone, those friends, those people who had walked with him, uh, those who should have been present were gone. They left and they hid. He was alone. And we're told in this passage to run the race set before us with patience. Put one foot in front of the other and do it again and again and again and again, patiently enduring, continuing to move forward, just as Jesus Christ did for us. What do you do? Well, you can feel bad. (laughs) And it does feel bad. I don't want to diminish feelings. It feels terrible. Well, you can allow that feeling to cause you to stay where you are, to rot away and to die, to do nothing meaningful in your life. You can do that. Or you can understand what is true. You can be the right person for others. You can go to the places where the right people are. And you can stay committed to the path that God has set you on. We all know what it is to feel alone. It's a terrible feeling. It's terrible. And if we're not careful, that feeling of aloneness can lead to discouragement and bitterness and hopelessness. It can become darkness. It leads us to further isolate. 
We need to separate the truth from how we feel. Recognize that in some situations, maybe we need to get some help to be the right person so that we can have good relationships. But there is a path forward. And the path forward is having confidence in a God who does love us, serving others, and allowing God to then work through us. There are few feelings in the world worse than being alone. Begin taking the steps forward, taking action. And it's crazy how when we take action, doing what we know we can do with the resources that we have, how our feelings will change. No one wants to be alone, and certainly we weren't created to be alone. But when you feel alone, keep moving forward. I hope those principles were a help to you. Again, some of it's about perspective, seeing the situation correctly so that we can get back to a place of being productive and useful and some specific steps. Specifically, what can I do? Read the Bible, understand what it says. Be in God's Word. The Holy Spirit will minister to you. Determine you're going to be the right person for others. There are some other lonely people in the world. Find them and minister to them. Put yourself in a place where you can find the right people. Maybe you're just hanging out with the wrong people. And then run the race that God has set in front of you. Again, I hope that's helpful. Please share that out with others. If you're not subscribed, subscribe. That's how you know when this content and others uh, comes online. Uh, but make sure then that you, subs- after subscribing, <laughs> subscribe, subscribe, I keep saying that. After subscribing, uh, share this content out with others. That would be fantastic. Take some time. Go over to lifeaudio.com. You can find other podcasts like mine and uh, a lot of great hosts there adding all the time. And uh, you'll find some great hosts there that deal with a number of topics, subjects, issues, all from a faith perspective, and you'll be encouraged by that as well. I'll encourage you one last time, as I do every single episode, when the bullets are flying your direction, when things are out of control, and man, perhaps you're even overwhelmed with the feelings of loneliness, Uh, maybe you feel like you've been rejected, don't put too much in that. Understand what's true. Get the right perspective. Get some people to help you uh, understand that correctly. But when you feel overwhelmed, when the mortar rounds are falling at your feet, you only have two choices. You can stay where you are and die. You can make that decision, but you don't have to. You don't have to. You can stay where you are and die, or you can march. What are you going to do? Thank you. Talk to you next time. Many of our veterans feel they need to fight their battles alone. This self-isolation has led to the staggering statistic of more than 20 veterans taking their lives every day. The mission of Mighty Oaks is to eradicate the veteran suicide epidemic and help our warriors change their legacies. We've been able to help over 4,000 veterans and first responders by equipping them with the tools they need to live the lives they were created to live. Our faith-based, peer-to-peer approach has one of the highest success rates of any program available today, offering hope and understanding to those who need it most. By aligning their lives to biblical principles, these men and women are able to lead their families, their communities, and our nation. It's your generosity that can make a difference in the lives of the men and women who have fought for our country and our freedoms. Now that they're home, don't let them fight alone. Learn more at MightyOaksPrograms.org.